Biochemistry is awesome, but it often gets a bad rap for being really hard and scary. And although it's an inherently challenging subject, it doesn't have to be scary. And so hopefully this biochemist starter's guide can help you prepare for a successful journey through biochemistry because it really is really awesome. So I have this page on my blog, The Starter's Guide to Biochemistry. You can find it easily here. And it's going to have a lot of key things for you on your journey. So know what you're getting yourself into. So like, what is biochemistry? What do biochemists do? Lots of different things. How is biochemistry different from organic chemistry? There's a lot of similarities, but there are also some differences. How about structural biology? So where scientists try to figure out the three structures of proteins and nucleic acids and complexes of them and design drugs that can match their active sites of enzymes and things. Some general advice for people starting out in science. And now we get into some nitty gritty science. So there are things that you... If you know before you go into biochem, you, like, hopefully you should know go before going into biochem because you've taken biochemistry after you've taken organic chemistry and general chemistry, some biology. There are things that you should remember from those courses, recall from those courses, review from those courses, because they're going to show up again and again in biochemistry. Some of these include your functional groups. And so thinking back to organic chemistry, you've got your functional groups, your carbonyls, your aldehydes, your ketones, your amides. We'll see these in peptide bonds and carboxylic acids and carboxylates and all these various things. And so I have some things that I think are important that are helpful to memorize in biochemistry or before biochemistry. I'm really into word parts, and so knowing the word parts is really, really helpful, and so I have a whole guide to word parts. But for most things, I don't think that the focus should be on memorization. And the reason to memorize some things is just so you can focus not on trying to recall what those things are when you want to instead focus on how those things interact and do cool stuff and actually applying concept. One of the things to review in addition to those functional groups was other things from organic chemistry because a lot of those reaction types, a lot of the things like nucleophilicity, electrophilicity, substitution reactions, those sorts of things, although we'll talk about them in slightly different terms and we'll get more into intermolecular forces than covalent bonds a lot of the time, a lot of the same concepts will apply. And so here's a review from organic chemistry, as well as review of thermodynamics that comes into play when you're thinking about binding to proteins, you're thinking about enzymes, you're thinking about metabolism, all those various things, thermodynamics is gonna be really important. So free energy and all that jam. If you're doing things, even if you're not working directly in a lab, if you're reading papers and things, you're gonna be looking at concentrations. You wanna be able to do some conversions. We already talked about the word parts. When we're looking at things on a page or on a screen or things like this, it can be hard to remember where this is actually being applied and how big molecules are. What, what's the context? And so having a sense of perspective is really important. And so talk a little about the conversions and we talk a lot about really, really small things in biochemistry. And so here's some guides to helping you keep a sense of scale and how to Think about scale. Focusing on the important concepts. I think it's important to think about the bigger picture and to think about what are the key things that you want to learn or what are the key things that you need to take away from a lesson or from a reading. When you're at this stage, this foundational stage where you're getting those concepts down so that later, if you want, you can then dive deeper into the details. If you don't have that foundation, then the details don't really matter because the foundation isn't there. So focus on that foundation. So these are some of the key things to focus on when you're going through your journey in biochemistry, those core concepts that then you can figure out or deduce the, the details. You can look more into the details, but if you can know these general things, then you'll, you'll, be, you'll be well set. But these are things that you'll kind of just focus on as you're going through biochemistry, but try to think about 
these things. And when you're reading the content, try to think about how they relate and look at the learning objectives for your course, things like this, in order to know what are the things that are really, really important to know and what are the things that are more just cool details. But if you don't understand the key things and you can't get the details. So I have those things to focus on as well as I also have a key biochemistry equations and those things worth memorizing that I already mentioned. So things like not just the functional groups, but also the amino acids, nucleic acids. And I think especially for the amino acids, knowing the abbreviations, even if you can't draw out the structure, if you can recognize the structure, know their properties without needing to go look at the structure, but then also be able to, by looking at the structure, tell me something about their your, their properties, predict something about their properties based on the presence, say, of different functional groups and know which amino acids have which functional groups. I do not believe in memorizing metabolic pathways. I think that if you study them enough, you might accidentally kind of memorize them. But if you focus on memorizing specific things, then you lose the ability often to apply those concepts. Every pathway looks new instead of thinking, oh, I've seen that sort of reaction before. I've seen a really similar reaction before. And in metabolism, rather than, although they may be presented at these strict pathways, it's really an interconnected web. And so keeping that perspective in mind is really important. Uh, yeah, so there's prefixes. We already talked about the word roots, those sorts of things. How do you study? So different people have different study strategies. These are some things that work for me study-wise that I suggest. One is making mind maps. So not just Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are great, one form of things. But mind maps where you connect topics and from try to connect things in as many ways as you can. So there are digital tools, that, free tools that you can use so that you can expand your canvas. Because what I found when making those on paper is you often run out of paper and are trying to scramble and do things. So Making them digitally also allows you then to kind of interact with them more in different places. <laughs> Googling. Googling is so important. I can't stress this enough, but also critically evaluating what you Google. But sometimes even just to get an answer in Google, you need to make sure that you're using kind of appropriate prompts and language so that it knows that you're talking about science things, say, and you get results that are the most helpful. So remember like using like plus signs to, if you want it to look for multiple things. When you search, I like to use the image search. And by using that image search, then I'm able to get a sense of things really quickly and if a sense of whether an article or something might be helpful for, for me. So the image, the image is really helpful. I find sometimes an image can be worth a thousand words when you have find a figure or a diagram that really demonstrates or shows you what you're looking for. But in order to kind of know if those things are valid, you need to know those fundamentals. And so Google doesn't replace, AI doesn't replace the ability to know, to know these concepts. And I will tell you, I have used AI and it has given me wrong answers. One time it gave me a wrong answer that was drawn from Wikipedia and Wikipedia had the wrong answer. And so I had to go edit Wikipedia to have the right answer. And the only reason why I found it was because I was trying to help show a student how you can effectively Google and evaluate the answers. And so AI is drawing from people and then feeding upon itself. But it's drawing from people. So we need to be the good people that are going to feed AI good information so that AI can then give good answers. And if there aren't people that know the, know the stuff, then AI can't know the stuff. So you need to have that critical thinking, but you need to develop that critical thinking. You need to actually learn these concepts. And AI can't learn those concepts for you. It can give you answers to some things. Those answers might be right, they might be wrong, but you can't tell unless you actually know, know things. And so it's really important to invest in learning. And so that's going to take some studying. It's going to take some hard work. And so hopefully these sorts of suggestions for studying and making mind maps can help you. Also, reading takes practice. Scientific articles I think AI can be really helpful for some things. And there are some great AI tools that can help you when you're analyzing science papers. 
and collecting information, but those AI tools do not have the critical thinking of a person. And the critical thinking of a person can only come if you have the knowledge, the foundational knowledge that the AI can't just give you that knowledge. The AI can give you facts. Sometimes those facts are true, but it can't really give you the knowledge. And the knowledge, you have to work for that knowledge. AI doesn't replace a human. And maybe it'll get better at doing certain things, but still there needs that to be that spark of creativity, that aha moment, that connecting concepts and thinking about what experiments might go next. Were those controls adequate? All these various things. In order to figure out those things, those things that you need a human for, you need to be that human that can actually know and how to read them. And so getting familiar with the layout of scientific articles, the publishing process, And then how to approach these articles, how to read them. You don't need to read them from the top to the bottom a lot of the time. Often what you'll do is you'll look at the abstract, see if the paper is even worth reading, go through the figures, see what sorts of experiments they did. Maybe you're looking for a specific piece of information. Maybe you're looking at, for a method. So You want to have a strategy when you approach these papers and you need to know kind of what goes into these papers. And so these tools will hopefully help you, these blog posts. Familiarize yourself with resources to help you. So key biochemistry databases, other resources, structural biology resources. I have pages with practical advice on various things. The slang, sometimes scientists, we use a lot of weird words or abbreviations and we kind of get so used to using them that we don't realize that it's not really common. And so I have a page of slang that hopefully I don't slip into too much. I also have a glossary, a spreadsheet of the topics that I've covered with links to posts and videos, and a guide to my resources. And so speaking of resources, I have this whole resources page where I'll find a lot of the same things that I linked to before, including the page I was just, we were just on, but I, whereas this one is the starter's guide, it's specifically tailored to help you when you're starting. This one is going to help you throughout. And so various things. So this is the spreadsheet. If you, you can actually go and look at the whole bigger thing. But I have spreadsheet where I have the topics by date and all the links, as well as various databases and pages, blog links for those. And some of the, some of the guides that we're talking about and even some more and some, some key figures and laboratory links. If you're starting in a lab, there's a, I have a page of lab techniques. I have a quick start guide for starting off research with good habits because you organization is key, things like that. Time management, various things that you'll want when you're starting out in the lab specifically. Staying organized and various advice for experimenting. Lab math, all that stuff. If you're interested in grad school, I've got a whole page of posts pertaining to scientists in training. And so this takes you through what, what's grad school, what's involved with grad school. Is grad school right for me? How can I apply to grad school? How do I choose a program? How do I choose a lab? What's a postdoc? And various tips to help you along the way. And finally, biochemistry is a huge privilege. So try to enjoy the journey and pay it forward. That's why I do all this. That's why I have this blog. That's why I have a YouTube channel. All these things is really, it's not to make money. I don't monetize it at all. I do it to help people because I feel so grateful for the education that I've received that I want to help others. And so I hope that this guide and my resources will not just help you to succeed in biochemistry, but help you to succeed in helping the world. Because even though the molecules might be small, the impact of biochemistry and a biochemist can be big. So go be that big impact and help make the world better, starting by learning biochemistry. <laughs>